Without water, there is no life. Without the Nile, an Egyptian professor says, there is no Egypt. Egypt is the gift of the Nile. The Nile for Egypt is life. And more than 95% of Egypt depends on its water. And consequently, it's in Egypt's interest to preserve its share of the Nile water, both in quantity and quality. It's a matter of destiny and is linked to the existence of the Egyptian state itself, and therefore, it can't be touched. Ayman Shabana is a political science professor at Cairo University. He says Egypt seeks negotiations with its Nile River Basin partners, but needs to conduct further studies to maximize its share of the Nile water. Water. However, at least five of the nine countries that make up the Nile River Basin have decided not to wait. Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Kenya and Ethiopia signed an agreement last month giving themselves greater control of the Nile waters. The move has angered the Egyptian government, which threatens to challenge the agreement. Leticia Obeng is with Global Water Partnership. She says water disputes rarely erupt into war, which is why negotiations are so important. There's over 260 shared basins around the world, and that, that's, that's a huge number, and most countries share water in some way or another. And so the important thing is that you have to figure out the best way to share water. The um, UN Water tells us that uh, since the beginning, you know, since uh, AD 850 or 805, there have been over 3,000 um, treaties on, on water management. That, that's a huge number. So countries have realized that it's important to find a way to, to work on, on managing water together. Treaties dating back more than 50 years grant Egypt as much as 75 percent of the Nile's waters and veto power on any projects that could disrupt its flow. Sudan has a right to more than 10 percent of the Nile's water and the other seven countries on the river share the rest. Professor Shabana says unlike Egypt, the Nile is not the only source of water for the other Nile Basin countries. Their water problems, he says, stem from poor resource management. Such countries need rational administration of water resources because they possess enormous water resources. Incidentally, Democratic Congo does not care at all about water. It has the Congo River, which is larger and wider than the Nile River. It also has groundwater. It has yearly 40 billion cubic meters. Water management is a challenge for many countries around the globe, especially in developing nations. But Leticia Obing says even poorer nations need to make it a priority. The world needs to take water management seriously. Um, as you can imagine, if you think about it, water touches every aspect of our lives. And um, it's a finite resource. And the more we pollute it, the more we mismanage it, the more difficult it is going to be for us to be able to um, use it in, in the future down the line and for our children and our children's children to use it. So it's very important that we manage it in a, in a sustainable way. Obeng points to the success of the management of the Yellow River in China. The management partnership serves more than 100 million people in nine provinces, tackling issues like flooding, supply and demand, water pollution, sustainability and economic development. But half a world away, a dispute over the resources in the Nile River Basin may not be resolved so amicably. Egypt is threatening legal action, while Ethiopia's prime minister has been just as insistent that a new Nile sharing agreement go forward, telling journalists the idea that the Nile belongs to Egypt is old-fashioned. Rebecca Ward, VOA News, Washington.